an unpublished essay, and it's called Baby Talk, The New Foreplay. I've discovered a new form of foreplay, baby talk. No, not baby talk as in goo goo ga ga. I mean the variety that goes in the midst of naked rubbing and stroking. I want to knock you up. For, for a 31 year old woman like me, which I will say now I'm 32, so you know, much, much older and wiser. <laughs> Longingly at every baby she passes on the street and hears her biological clock ticking loudly almost every minute of the day. Those words are not only music to my ears, but other more erogenous zones as well. I recently re reconnected with a guy I had a fling with in 2001. We started emailing and catching up on our lives and I let slip how much I want to be a mom. If you ever need someone to fill a turkey baster, I'm your man, he wrote. <laughs> turkey baster, what? I replied, partly offended. Partly thinking about how much more work and less fun using cook cooking implements would be than the old-fashioned method. Or we could use a more personal delivery system, he replied. It was all in good fun, or so I thought. I could daydream and talk of a quickie weekend in Vegas to do the deed, because I didn't really think it was going to happen. Then our flirting got more heated, realistic, not just a fantasy. I started to wonder whether we could actually do this. I made plans to visit him, and our dirty words only got dirtier. When we were finally back in each other's arms, at first, things were even hotter than they'd been on the phone or online. The first night of my visit, I'm lying next to him, naked, his fingers starting to wander down my body as we whisper to each other. You make me want to have babies with you, I tell him. The words making images form in my head of us with two or maybe even three kids more real now that the possibility of creating said babies is right before me. I don't know where we'd live or how we'd afford it, but while I'm next to him, huddled in the warmth and safety of his bed, it not only seems possible, but romantic and sexy as hell. I just want to say all the dialogue here is like literal, literally translated. <laughs> before I say the next line, like it's funny, but it really did happen. I want you to be my little baby machine, he said. <laughs> in a deep, seductive, I can't do the voice, but in a deep, seductive voice, as his hand cups my belly. I nuzzle my face into his neck and think not about the mechanics of sex, but about the most retro of fantasies, being barefoot and pregnant, waiting for him to get home from work. Then his fingers wander lower, and that touch makes me let loose with even more baby talk. I haven't realized until that moment that I'm not the only one with parenting fantasies at the forefront of my mind. And I like knowing that he doesn't just want to humor me by entertaining such talk, but is as invested in this mythical mommy-daddy future as I am. And yes, right now it's pure fantasy, utterly unrealistic, far removed from our daily lives, selfish in a sense. Aside from love and desire, we don't have much to offer a child, no stable home, no financial security, not even the promise, however tentative, that we'll be together forever. But it's no less real or pow powerful a fantasy despite those truths. It literally turns me on to think about upending my highly independent, constantly running around city girl writer life for something much more mellow and maternal. I want to take care of my guy as much as I want to take care of our future children. And in turn, I can tell from the way he presses his hand against my belly that he wants to be the father who knows best. Talking like this feels more than a little surreal, and more than a little forbidden. For my 14 years of having sex, pregnancy has been something to be prevented at all costs. I've usually been on the pill or used condoms when I slept with guys, and the few times I'd had unprotected sex, I wasn't able to enjoy it because I'd been beset by guilt and fear, rushing off afterwards for pregnancy tests and plan B. The idea of deliberately choosing to make a baby when we're not married, when we're hardly even dating, seems crazy, yet exciting precisely for its craziness. It feels forbidden, too, because even though we learn from the first time our parents give us the where do babies come from talk, that sex is how you make babies, the two topics are strangely confined in their own little worlds. I should know, since I write about the former for a living, and it's felt like I've had to come out as wanting a child in some ways. In my scene, sex isn't for procreation, but recreation. <laughs> my peers go to orgies, have one night stands with people they meet online, and blog about their sex lives. So do I, or at least I did. <laughs> but especially since I turned 30 almost two years ago, I've wanted sex to be about something bigger than myself and my pleasure, 
something that can never be called tawdry, something that's on some level innocent and pure. I don't mean mechanical or boring, but a little less about the bottom line. I want sex that endures, and how better to make it endure than to get pregnant. In my vision of mythical utopian mommyhood, sex would take a back seat to real life, and that's with capital letters. Of course I'd still do it, but it wouldn't be the be all and end all it feels like it is now. Fetishizing pregnancy in this way feels strange to me, like I'm either going to jinx things or fuck up my kids as I form them. When he takes my nipple into his mouth and tugs hard, I'm blissed out until he says, I want to see if I can make milk come out of it. <laughs> Will he want to drink my milk after I've given birth? <laughs> more disturbing will I want him to? <laughs> Talking about our future children in this context feels a little bit wrong, even though we both come to it with the best of intentions. And maybe the fact that we're bringing fertility directly into our lovemaking, as opposed to bringing sex into fertility, as so often seems to be the case, is what makes it so verboten. But why? Sex and babies should on some level go hand in hand, yet really they don't. We're shocked when, outside of porn, pregnant or lactating women are treated as sexual beings. When people pass on tips for the best positions to create a girl or a boy, they do so with a clinical tone, making it clear that any erotic pleasure to be gained from said positions is incidental, a bonus on the path to becoming a parent. I'd like to know why the two can't coincide, why a phrase like, I want to have your babies, can't be said with as much passion as, fuck me hard. I like the idea of our sex life extending beyond frantic, blissful, breathless minutes under the covers. I like it so much, in fact, that even though I've requested that he purchase condoms, when his fingers are touching me right where it counts, and he's telling me he wants to fill me with his sperm, I'm hard-pressed to resist. When I shut my eyes, I can see it all. Me with a straining stomach pushing a baby carriage while he takes my arm, him pressing his face against my belly, him gently working his mouth between my legs when I can't move as much in my final trimester. <laughs> There's a photo of a pregnant Nicole Ritchie on the cover of the tabloid star with fiance Joel Madden's arm draped protectively around across her belly. Not only does she look infinitely hotter and healthier than she did before, she looks comfortable there with him protecting her. Every time I see that photo, I want that same comfort for myself that sense of protecting someone innocent and fragile, and being someone innocent and fragile to be taken care of, all at the same time. I have no real clue what pregnancy will be like, whether I'll be hormone crazed and horny, or simply want to sleep all the time and forget about sex for a good year or two. I don't know if the father of my child will lose interest in me once my body is permanently changed, or vice versa. I'm sure being a mom is nowhere near as drop-dead sexy as we both make it seem when we're caught up in a passionate moment. For now, though, I'll take my mommy fantasies to bed with me, at least until my reality catches up to them. <laughs>